Oh, Lord, what's happened now? No, no, I'm sorry. Sis, every, everyone's okay. I'm calling to tell you that the kids won't be coming to stay with you at the end of the month like it was planned. What happened? Where will they be going? I thought you said there wasn't anyone else to take them. There isn't. But it seems the kids got into a little trouble where they were and they have to leave right away. What kind of trouble? The little boy got into a fight and the police had to be called. Oh my goodness. Was anybody seriously hurt? What happened? Well, from what I can gather, he was being picked on in school. And when the bullies backed him into a corner, he came out swinging and broke somebody's nose. Oh Lord, is he okay? Was he arrested? No, he wasn't arrested. The teacher had just stepped out of the room when the boys had surrounded him. The teacher told the police this was an ongoing thing with the boys picking on Jay. If they knew this was going on, why didn't they do something about those little bullies before this? Well, they tried, but the other kids were afraid to tell on them, and the teacher never had a chance to catch them in the act. At first, the bullies were trying to say they were minding their own business when Jay walked over to them and began harassing them for no reason. But another kid in the class decided to speak up, and pretty soon, all the kids were telling on the bullies, and that was all the teacher needed to stop the police from taking Jay away. Is the little guy going to be okay? Yeah, he's going to be fine, but him and the other bullies were suspended for a week. Good for the little thugs. Sorry for their parents, though. But if Jay wasn't hurt, why aren't the children coming to stay with me at the end of the month? This is the difficult part. Jay thinks the boys are going to get even with him on the street since they all live in the same area and refuses to leave the house, even to go to school. The girls are afraid to leave the house because Jay won't leave the house and nothing anyone says can make him change his mind. You know he's staying with Charlene and her husband and you know Charlene is not the most patient and understanding person in the world, especially where kids are concerned. So what does that have to do with the kids coming to stay with me at the end of the month? I'm not following this whole thing, TJ. You said he wasn't arrested, he wasn't hurt, he's with Charlene and won't leave the house. Are you saying he won't leave the house even to come here? No. I'm saying Charlene's husband is fed up with the kids and wants them out of his house this weekend. What? Are you kidding? I kid you not. He says he can't be bothered with them and has his own problems. He said he doesn't like the kind of pressure it's putting on his wife and that the boy is the worst of all. And he wants his house back to normal and his wife back to himself. He can't do that to those children. If children's services gets their hands on those kids, it may be weeks, months, maybe even years to get them back. They'll split them up. And those kids have gone through enough already. TJ, you can't let them do that to those kids. I know, sis, calm down. I already spoke to Charlene, and she promised me she wouldn't let anyone touch those kids until we got there. But that is where the problem starts. I know we originally said you were going to take the kids at the end of the month, but I think you might have to step in a little earlier than planned and get them this weekend. Oh my goodness, this weekend, oh my goodness, the kids are going to absolutely flip. I know it's a little inconvenient, but we don't have any other place for them to go. I don't want them moving from place to place, and he refuses to keep them any longer. Besides, if he doesn't want them there, I hate to think how they must be feeling. Yeah, I know what you mean. What is Charlene saying about all of this? Well, Actually, she is not happy at all about this because she and the girls had gotten quite attached. Right now, she isn't speaking to her husband, so the kids need to be away from all of that. You're right. They need to be removed from there as soon as possible. Okay, this is very unexpected but not impossible. I'll take off work tomorrow and head down there early in the morning. Are you coming with me? 
Of course. You don't even need to ask. What time are you planning on leaving home? Hmm. Are you driving your car or riding with me? I can ride with you. Just swing by and pick me up. Good. I'll leave here about three in the morning and I should be by your house by five. That way we can hit the highway before rush hour. How does that sound? Sounds great. And so do you. You are something else, sis. I don't know anybody else that will be willing to open their home and their hearts at a moment's notice like you have. You are truly one of a kind, and I'm so proud of you. You're pretty special too, bruh. Well, I'll leave you to your preparations, and I'll see you in the morning. Good luck with your kids, and get some sleep. We've got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. I will. I'll call you when I'm on my way. Good night. After Denise hung up the phone, she stood in the middle of her room, and tears began rolling down her cheeks. She was not crying for herself, but her heart was aching for the three little children that had just lost the best friend in the world they would ever have, and she prayed they weren't being treated badly. Past experience proved that some people could be very inconsiderate, and Denise knew that the sooner she got those children out of their house, the better off they would be. As she began packing a small travel bag for her rescue mission, she began thinking of how she was going to break the news to her children that they were going to be getting company sooner than they had planned. The unexpected arrival would be no problem to Matt, but the girls were going to be a different story, especially Nett. Denise hoped her youngest child was not going to make the life for the three children totally intolerable because she knew Nett and she knew she could be a monster sometimes. Well, now is as good a time as any, she thought to herself, and went downstairs to break the news to her children. The girls were still in their room doing their homework, and Matt was looking at the television in the living room. Have I told you lately how much I love you, she asked as she sat next to him on the couch. I'll get my coat, he says, starting to rise from the couch. No, I don't want anything from the store. Do me a favor and call your sisters over here for me, please she said while hugging her son and giving him a pat on the rear. I don't think you want me to call them. They're not speaking to me yet. Yes, I do. Just go knock on their door and tell them I need them in the living room right now. Okay, it's my funeral. Maddie, I want you to come back in here as well. Are we in trouble? No, I just want to talk to the three of you. Please go get them now. Matthew walked to his sister's rooms and loudly knocked on the door, telling them that their mother wanted them in the living room right away, making it sound as if it were an emergency. Sucking their teeth and rolling their eyes at their brother, who was standing outside of their room, the girls walked briskly to see what their mother wanted. Yes, Ma, said Vet as she entered the living room, not trying to hide the annoyance in her voice, from her brother's loud, unwelcome intrusion. Everybody come in here and sit down. Listen, there's a problem with the kids and they won't be coming here in two weeks like we thought. So they won't be living with us after all? Asked Ned excitedly. I didn't say they wouldn't be staying with us at all. I just said they won't be coming here in two weeks. Good, that gives us some more time by ourselves. What happened to them? Are they okay? Asked Vet with a voice filled with concern, even as she rolled her eyes at her sister. The kids are fine. Then why aren't they coming here to live with us? Does somebody else decide to take them instead? Vet continued. No, no one else has decided to take them, and they will be coming here to live with us, just not in two weeks. Then what happened, and when will they be coming, asked Matt with frustration. Charlene's husband has decided that taking care of the kids is a bit more than they could handle at this time, and has decided to put them in a foster care agency. Oh man, that's messed up. I feel sorry for those little kids, said Matt with genuine sympathy. Me too, echoed Ned. I hear a lot of stories about those places. Mom, We can't just stand here and let that happen to those kids. 
Isn't there someone that can take the kids for a while so they won't have to go into foster care? We did. That's what I wanted to tell you. Uncle TJ and I are going down there to help get the kids out of Shawnee's house. I know it can be hard getting used to somebody new in your house all of a sudden, and it's three times as bad with three extra mouths to feed. Thank God for you and Uncle TJ. So when are you going? I've already started packing. I'll be taking off work for a couple of days because I'm leaving about three in the morning. This morning? Asked Matt incredulously. Yes, this morning. And I'll be gone for a couple of days. So I need you three to stop this silly feud thing you've got going because Matt is in charge and everybody must listen to him. And I expect you to obey the house rules. I'll be back on Saturday and I want nothing but a good report when I get back. Do I make myself clear? But Ma, why is Matt in charge of us? We know what we're supposed to do. We don't need him in charge of us, asked Nett in her usual pouty voice while rolling her eyes at her brother. Look, little girl, I don't have time for this nonsense right now. You heard what I said, and I mean it. I'm going to finish packing. As the girls headed back toward their room, Vet stopped and looked at her mother quizzically. But mom, you never said who was taking the kids and when exactly were they coming here to live with us. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you, their mother said, looking each one straight in the eye while taking a deep breath. When I come back on Saturday, the kids will be with me. No one said a word as Vet Ned and Matt looked at each other in utter astonishment. And then they all began questioning their mother at the same time. Stop, 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 stop. I know you have a lot of questions, but the bottom line is this. Things are not good for the kids right now, and they need to be here with us now. So get it together, behave, and I'll see you in a couple of days. With that, she kissed each of them on the forehead and returned to her bedroom to finish packing for her mission of mercy.